Hey everyone, welcome to this video on Merkle trees and we will try to understand what kind of problems do Merkle trees help us to solve and what Merkle trees actually are. Alright, so we will start out with a very simple problem. We have got two lists of words. India London cat and joke in one and India London bat and joke in another. And we will try to find out the word which is different in both of them. So we can see that cat and bat is different. All other words are same. So we will try to detect these two words. Now this is something very similar to the problem that git helps us to solve. Um, in git you can, if you use git diff, you can see that out of all those thousands of lines of code in hundreds of files in the code base, git tells us where we made that silly, uh, or where we fixed that, that silly typo mistake that we have made in the last commit. Uh, they don't go over all the files and all the all the lines of code, they use something called Merkle tree. I will not go into the depth of the specific implementation of Git. We will just solve this simple problem of two lists of word. But it's interesting to know that, interesting to know that uh, Git also solves something similar to this. All right, so we have got two lists of word and C and B is different. I've highlighted that in here. And now let's try to solve it with, you know, the brute force approach. So we will compare India and India and we see that, okay, these are same. We compare London and London and we see, okay, these are same too. And then we compare cat and bat and see that, okay, C and B is not the same when comparing the strings. Thus, cat and bat are different and we print it out. And obviously, joke and joke is also same. So what will be the time complexity of this full uh, approach? Each string comparison let's take the length of the string to be k it takes o of k and there are n let's say there are n words so it takes o of n k um, now we will try to reduce this time complexity for most use cases and um, it's important to tell you that the problem that we are trying to solve is necessarily finding a small difference a small difference in two large chunks of data. So in here we have got two small lists of word and uh, we will try to find out that there is one word which is different for a particular index. So now let's try to solve the same problem with a Merkle tree. Uh, to understand what Merkle tree is, we will go the steps to you know populate all its nodes or to construct it. Um, so you can see I have drawn a basic binary tree here. I've written down all the words here and we will try to see how this transform into a Merkle tree. So the first step to make a Merkle tree is to get its leaf nodes. To get its leaf, leaf nodes, I'll take all the words in the list and I'll hash them. So I hashed India to get 182D, hashed London, hashed cat and hashed joke. Um, this is a very simple process. We will use something like SHA-256 to get these hashes. And now we will move on to get its parent node and up till the root node. So to get the parent node of these two leaf nodes, what we will do is we will append these two values. So we get 1A2D, 743A, and then hash this appended string. So we will take uh, both these values, append it, hash it, and get 0ab3. Um, so this is a very, very simple thing that we are trying to do. We are making this hash, the, the hash that this node stores, dependent on all the leaf nodes or all the nodes under this subtree, right? So 0ab3 depends on 1a2d and 743a, both of them. So if we change um, something in here, let's say I make n to m, this change reflects up here in the leaf node and thus that change reflects up in this node too. So that is the basic idea, the preliminary idea behind a Merkle tree, that the changes propagate up the tree by using the cryptographic hash function. All right, I'll move on to populating this node and we will do the same operation. We will 
take the values of both the leaf nodes it has i'll append it and i'll get b123 now we will go higher up in the tree so i'll take these two nodes uh, that nodes we just computed and we will do the same thing we will take these two values we will append them and hash them in the root so now look at this guys the root the hash that the root node stores depend on both these nodes this node in, uh, in turn depends on these two nodes and these nodes are the hashes of the words so if we change any word from these uh, this list of word the root would change because the uh, change would be propagated up in tree let's say i changed n to m as i was telling 1 a2d would change to something else 0 ab3 would change and thus 4 5 c2 would also change to something else right now we will do this same operation we will construct the same tree with india london bat and joke uh, and you can see that the concept i talked about of the change propagating up the tree happens here uh, bat the hash of bat is different thus this node gets a different value and this node gets a different hash so how will we actually compare these two trees it's pretty simple so first we'll check the root and we see that the root is different so now we can be certain that there is at least one word that differs in both the lists because if the roots were the same that means there is no difference in both the lists both the lists are same and now that we see that it's different we will go and check its right node now in the right node we see that it's 0 ab3 in both the cases so every node under the under this subtree and in turn every leaf node under this subtree must have the same hash which necessarily means that we don't need to check any further in this subtree because we are 100% certain that all the words under this subtree is the same however the left hash the left node of uh, this parent is different that means that there is at least one change in this subtree so we will recursively search this subtree too and we come to this node which is the the left child of the tree the, the node that we were just talking about and we see that 671d is different from 901b and that's a leaf node that means we can just directly get the words that are attached to them and that's cat and bat great so we have got the difference you know the difference of word uh, that we were searching for so uh, this is the basic structure of a merkle tree which is a very simple data structure um, it's just a tree where each uh, word has been hashed to get all the leaf nodes and all the subsequent nodes all the higher up nodes are got by appending the both children nodes and hashing them uh, and I've shown it as a binary tree here, which is the most common implementation of a Merkle tree. But you can also implement it in a, you know, a K-way tree, and which will also be uh, called a Merkle tree. There's no restrictions on that. All right, now let's talk about the time complexity of the of the Merkle tree approach. And I've taken this data from Brilliant.org, so I link the full description, uh, full uh, article in the description, and I, I really encourage you to read it. So the space complexity they have talking about or talked about is O of n in case of average and worst. Now it's good to mention that uh, in the worst time complexity uh, they have given the time complexities for a k-way Merkle tree, but in this whole discussion we have talked about only a binary Merkle tree. So we will be talking about the average average column where they have used a binary Merkle tree. So the space complexity is O of n, the search complexity is O of log base 2n, which is very natural because that's how we find uh, some data in a binary tree. And that's why we are using a, a tree for searching that small change in the first place. And in the insert and delete uh, time complexities are also given. And it's good to mention that as I 
shown you in the naive case, I used uh, something like O n into k, O of n, O n into k, because I was considering the time it takes to compare two strings. But here they have uh, taken an example where to compare two values in the data, it's O of one. So they have just ignored, they have kind of ignored that uh, uh, we are comparing the strings with O of k. And just to simplify this, uh, this table. The more interesting point here is of the synchronization. And this is the problem that we were trying to solve. Synchronization, or that checking that if um, the values, if the, if both the lists are same or not, and where is the difference? So you can see that the average is log base to n and the worst is O of n. Um, the average and both of these uh, data, both of these values are given for a binary Merkle tree, by the way. So the average test case gives us when there is some small changes and the worst case gives us when all the words of uh, the list changes. But we have to understand, and now you will tell that, well, in the naive approach, you've shown us that it's O n into k. Here you are telling us that the worst time, the worst case time complexity is O of n, and you said that they have ignored the k here. So isn't both the two approach same? Then why are we using a Merkle tree? Because this only, as I told you, this only happens when all the words are different, and that's not a problem we are trying to solve with a Merkle tree. The problem we are trying to solve with a Merkle tree is that in two huge chunks of data, there is only some small differences and that we can easily do in O of log 2 n. Using Merkle tree also comes with a cost, obviously. And the cost is persistent storage space. So we have to take this Merkle tree and store it somewhere. If you're storing the whole Merkle tree, we have to take some file storage or some key value storage or some database where we can store it. And that will take space. And that's the trade-off that we are doing here. There are some use cases where only the Merkle tree root um, is stored just to check if two huge chunk of data is just different or not. Are they different or are they not different? That's the only question that it tries to answer. And it's a very quick way to do it. It's, you just check the Merkle tree roots formed out of both those chunks of data and you see if they're equal. So it's a very fast way and we get the result. There are some very popular use cases, cryptocurrencies, Git, file systems, and NoSQL databases. I'll actually link a video in the description which talks in detail about all uh, these, uh, of some of these use cases. I'll not go into the depth because I don't need to, that video is already there. Uh, so that will be it for this video guys. Uh, I'll see you in the next one.